I'm Gish Jen. I'm a novelist. And this is a very short story called Lulu in Exile. It appears in my upcoming collection, which is called Thank You, Mr. Nixon. And I want you to listen to it and think about mothers and mothers-in-law and sons and brothers. Arnie Shu the success, brother of Duncan Shu the failure, had his own import-export business. This now involved a Hong Kong office and several mainland factories, as well as 16 lucky employees, all of whom amassed frequent flyer miles at an enviable rate as a result of their good attitude toward life. Arnie, who boasted the best attitude of everyone, wore Italian suits in colors named for vitamin-rich vegetables like kale and eggplant. Also, he wore wraparound sunglasses and how and had his car washed inside and out while he went shopping with his girlfriend from Hong Kong, Lulu. Lulu did not have to have a good attitude, being cute and full of entertainingly skewed views. For example, she could never get over how underdeveloped malls were in America. She believed Americans were not true shoppers, being too enamored of parks. Explain to me about trees, she once said to Duncan, I know people in America like to walk around in the woods with the mosquitoes, but why do they like such things? How about if you explain to me, okay? Her tone turned wheedling as she made a pretty show of her dimples. No one missed Hong Kong like Lulu. First of all, as a vertical city, easily negotiated by a chauffeured car and elevator, Hong Kong had been perfect for high heels. Also, it was a city, not of unsavory soul bearing, but of happy deals cut over breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it was a city where girls were girls, where Lulu had worn metallic pink suits and high slit silver cocktail dresses and laughed at American tourist girls in their flip flops and sack cloth. But now, thanks to history, here she was, exiled in natural fiber land. Maybe Hong Kong would be fine after the handover, but the shoes were convinced the place to live was going to be America. And so they tried to convince Lulu, even as Arnie and Duncan's mother Marge wondered if she would make a good wife. All she knows is spend money, she complained to Duncan, even though she theoretically wasn't speaking to him. Recently, she had taken to cutting out articles about every sort of learning disability now known and sending them all to him, as if one of them must explain something. And what about the children? Children need a real mother to tell them what to do, what is right attitude, what is wrong attitude, who their friend should be. Otherwise, what? Otherwise, nobody's going to graduate school. That's what. Otherwise, all the kids turn out like me. Exactly. So bad the mothers can't sleep at night, thinking it is their own fault. What do you mean, my fault, Marge said. You never listen to anything I say. You think you know everything already. That is your whole problem. I tell you, you are stupid. Do you listen to me? Of course not. Instead, you say, if I'm so stupid, how come blah, 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 blah. But it's true, Ma. If I'm so stupid, forget about true. That is your whole trouble. You want to tell me what is true, as if you are the mother. That is why I'm not speaking to you these days, because I am the mother. I am the one who says what is true. Do you hear me? Faintly, he said. This may or may not have been why his mother really did stop speaking to him and how it happened that she advanced her plot on Lulu strictly on her own. Arnie did not believe this, but it was true. It was completely on her own that Marge invited Lulu out shopping and through sneaky use of old world manners, bought Lulu a dove gray evening gown, a pair of peach suede pants with matching camisole top and a baby blue silk motorcycle jacket, all in size two. Lulu stared at them. She had always felt deeply ashamed not to be a truly petite Asian woman, but rather an ungainly giant. Still, bravely, she said, I am a size six. No, 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 said Marge. Only in your mind you are a size six. What I say is true. You are a size two. Size six is the size of a horse. I am not a horse, wailed Lulu. Of course not, said Marge. You are a size two. Also, she cajoled Lulu into having lunch with her. Arnie says, you love chocolate mousse, she said. To which Lulu said, no, 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 no. 
only to have Marge order it anyway. Don't be polite, she said, and you haven't eaten one bite, and you don't like it? I order something else. No, 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 no. But a Scottish trifle arrived, and after the Scottish trifle, a hot fudge brownie sundae, and after the hot fudge brownie sundae, a baked Alaska. I love you, Lulu told Arnie that night. You are a great success, but I wonder about our future. Oh, Lulu, said Arnie with a misty look. There's nothing to wonder about. I've just been waiting for the right moment to ask. That's not it. In the ring. You said yourself that you didn't know what cut you liked best. Your mother had so much fun. She wants to take me shopping every week. Arnie stopped short, puzzled. She says if we get married, she's going to take me shopping every day. But Lulu, said Arnie, you like to shop. And after shopping lunch, said Lulu, she says if we get married, she's going to take me out to lunch every single day. And that's too much to ask? To have lunch with my mother? For me? For us? I thought we were in love. We were, said Lulu. But then she could say no more as, overcome by sobbing, she adjusted Arnie's tie for him one last sweet time.